Good morning. Welcome to the Belong Collective. So excited you're here with us today for our digital gathering. Just wanted to welcome you. My name is Justin Douglas, lead pastor of the Belong Collective. And this is how we meet now, digitally in this way. And we've got some really cool things planned for this gathering today. So as I welcome you, I want to let you know you're gonna need some paper, uh, either a few pieces of paper, just one, one per person. If you've got a whole family uh, watching together, each of you should have your own piece of paper or notebook, sketchbook, whatever. And uh, you're gonna need a pencil or a pen or crayons, but uh, even colored pencils work, work great. Whatever uh, writing utensils you have or art utensils you have, markers, whatever, you should go get that. And uh, make sure everybody has one because later on in the gathering, we've got something special planned. Today's gathering, I think, is really going to be a great time. You're going to laugh a little bit, maybe. Uh, you're going to smile, and we all need that right now, right? And uh, hopefully, you're going to be inspired by the story of Joseph as we continue on in this series to see how Joseph went through so many hard times, but ultimately, God continued to show up in his story. And I know right now, for many of us, uh, this is a hard time, and so uh, it's a great reminder as we open uh, the book of Genesis and read through the story of Joseph to, to be reminded that, that God shows up even in the hard stuff and that, that God is with us in the hard stuff and that ultimately uh, something good can happen even as we go through that, even as we feel that, that pain and difficulty. And so that's going to be exciting today. We've got some, some great music, and, uh, and again, this is going to be something special, so make sure you have this ready. Your love is like radiant diamonds Bursting inside us we cannot contain Your love will surely come find us Like blazing wildfires God of mercy, sweet love of mine, I have surrendered to your desire. May this offering stretch across the skies, this hallelujah. Thank you. 
bursting inside us we cannot contain your love will surely come find us like blazing wildfires singing your Don Schmirkendy. We want to stay connected here with you at TBC News. You can go to our website and easily fill out our new connect card. Oh, <laughs> look at that. My friend Fred Flintstone's filling one out right now. Hey, all you cool cats. Like us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure you subscribe. Rate and review our YouTube. Now we go live to our field reporter, Monica Morning Joan. Thank you, Don. So we know that people that are graduating, they don't get to have their ceremonies and they don't get to have a graduation party or something like that. And we just want to let you know if you're in kindergarten, elementary school, middle school, high school, anything, that we're celebrating you graduating. Thank you. Back to you, Don. Thank you, Monica, for that special word. Here's a special message from our TBC Helps Department. Hello, Belong Collective. My name is Allie, and I have an update for you regarding our TBC Helps initiative. As some of you know, we team up regularly with Bethesda Mobile Mission to go out and serve those who are homeless and living on the streets. And recently, they have had to put that mobile mission on pause. So what we did was we decided to get a small group of people together to go out and try and fill that gap. And we asked you for your help to do that, and he really responded. So this is an update on all of the things that we've been able to provide because of your generosity. So I'm gonna go down through a list of all of those things. We've been able to hand out 370 bags of food, which include applesauce, protein packs, bananas, crackers, Jif individual peanut butter cups, and sometimes a sweet treat like Reese's. 160 lunch bags from Yellowbird Cafe that we've purchased, approximately 20 cases of water, 30 rolls of toilet paper, 50 hygiene kits, 100 hand sanitizers, women's hygiene kits, and well over 100 t-shirts, socks, and underwear, and additional clothing um, and blanket items, things like that. So thank you so much for your generosity and the impact that you are making. Thank you so much, Allie, for that update. If you want to support the Belong Collective, you can go online. Thank you for joining us on GBC News. Signing out, Don Schmergeny. Hey, just wanted to pop in real quick and remind you, don't forget your art supplies. You're gonna need those here soon. Make sure everyone has a piece of paper and some colored pencils or whatever writing utensil you prefer.
There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every. everybody, my name is Lauren Castillo. I'm an author and an illustrator and I'm coming to you from my home studio in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Um, I am here to share my new book, Our Friend Hedgehog, with you guys today and we are going to draw the character of Hedgehog. So let's get to it. Okay, so Hedgehog is the main character in the series, Our Friend Hedgehog, The Story of Us. And we're gonna draw her today. We are going to, but before we start drawing, I want to show you the full cast of the characters. So here is the cast. So here's Hedgehog, and this is her best friend, Muddy, 
And these are the characters that become then her good friends that she meets along the way in this adventure story. So, all right, let's get started. We'll start with my little sketchbook here. Okay. So I like to draw in sketchbooks, small ones preferably. I am a big fan of drawing tiny, as you can see right there. Um, and I love to draw with pens. This is called a Tumbo pen. It's a calligraphy pen, but sometimes I draw with ballpoint pens or just pencil or even a crayon or a colored pencil. These are watercolored pencils. So if they get wet after you draw with them, like, let me show you how they get wet. So if I dip my finger in some water, I can just about turns into watercolored. So it's pretty cool. Just just by this little pencil. You can paint with it with your finger. So I'm gonna show you how I draw hedgehog. So we start with her head. So she's got a big round noggin there. Actually, it's a tiny noggin. A little nose. A little, little mouth here. So here's her eye. Let's give her an ear. And hedgehogs have what are called spines. They are like hairs we have as humans, and the spines sort of protect these little creatures. So here, the hedgehog little arm there. Here's more spines on her back. Give her a belly here, a little foot in the front. A little foot there showing in the back. Give her a bit more spines on her belly. Okay. There we go. Hedgehog loves nature. She is probably holding a flower. wildflower and her friend Chick is sitting on the wildflower. <laughs> there we go. There's Chick. Now we've got to give Hedgehog a place to be sitting in. So I'm going to use my watercolor pencils. Actually wait forgot one important thing about Hedgehog. She's got a very rosy cheek. That's a big trait of Hedgehog here. So that's how we know her from other Hedgehogs is that she's got this rosy cheek and she's got a little bit of rosiness going on in her ear right there. Um, so let's give her some, some grass. This flower here. We'll make this a, I'm going to use one of my markers, this is a red flower, there we go, and maybe put a shadow, it's sunny out, so this good hedgehog's got a little bit of a shadow underneath of her, from the sun that casts that, there we go, and then if I wet my finger again, can sort of paint with that watercolor pencil. Let's give Chick some color too. Chick's got an orange beak. And Chick has a brother. So let's add Chick's brother. Chick number two. On top of Hedgehog's head. The chicks are very curious little little guys here. Alright. Gotta color in Chick's brother. There you have it. Let's give Hedgehog a little bit more spines. So basically, Hedgehog's pretty easy to draw. She's got lots of little lines. 
throughout her body. Those are all the little spines. I wonder if you've ever met a, he a hedgehog. I've always wanted a hedgehog as a pet, but I haven't had a pet hedgehog yet. Maybe in the future. All right, so there you have it. I'll draw, I'll sign my name. That's what we always do after we make a drawing. Lauren Castillo. And there you have it. Our friend Hedgehog and her chick friends. Well, thank you all for spending time with me today and drawing alongside me. I hope you will continue to practice those hedgehoggy drawing skills. And until next time, take care. Bye. So today we continue our series on Joseph as we open Genesis 40. Now before we open Genesis 40, uh, I want to quickly just give you a rundown of everything we've seen so far. So first we have Joseph, this youngest brother uh, who's born to his dad Jacob, who has multiple kids to four different wives and um, there's a lot of sibling rivalry, a lot of messed up family dynamics that ultimately lead to a lot of jealousy and hatred for Joseph. And the jealousy and hatred is because his dad really favors him above the others. And so he makes him this like special coat that pretty much says like, you're special. And Joseph's talking about all these dreams that he's having as a young kid, these dreams that he's going to be in charge and rule and even rule over his brothers and even his father. And and this gets him in a little bit of trouble, like even more so his brothers hate him now, not just because of the family dynamics, but now even just because their brother's so kind of cocky and arrogant. But he's placed in a really difficult position because this is completely upside down based on the cultural dynamics of the day. He's not supposed to be the favorite. And when he is, it creates tons of problems for him. And so it's an interesting story from the onset. But then what makes it more interesting is, is Joseph is told to go out and give a report on his brothers and how they're doing as shepherds. And uh, his dad would frequently send him out to do this and he would bring back bad reports about his brothers. In essence, he was a tattletale uh, and you know typical punk younger brother kind of type stuff. And uh, this time he comes out to give a report on his brothers and from a distance they see him coming and they say, let's kill him. Yes, kill their brother. And... Uh, and then as he's still approaching, they decide, you know, maybe killing him's a little over the top. Let's throw him in this well and he'll just die. Uh, but then we don't have the blood on our hands. I mean, which is an interesting, like, moral way of, like, excusing yourself for murder. Like, oh, we'll let, we'll let just, you know, nature kill him as he's trapped. Uh, but ultimately, they're like, let's try to find a more humane way of getting rid of him. Uh, and that ends up not even being the option because they see some traders coming off in the distance and they decide to sell him into slavery. So what happens next is he's sold into slavery. They go back to their father and they say, uh, look, we found this coat of many colors with blood all over it. They put animal's blood on it. And it must be that Joseph was attacked by a wild animal and he died. And, and, and their father is like in serious despair and grief because his favorite son is now dead. Now, he's not dead. He's actually been sold into slavery. And so he goes off and he becomes a, uh, a servant in Potiphar's house. And then what ends up happening is he gets in this whole thing we looked at last week where, where uh, he's serving in the house and Potiphar's wife uh, thinks he's handsome and continues to kind of make passes at him, uh, you know, that, that, that Joseph's integrity will not allow him uh, to take part in. And then eventually he's accused of something and sent to jail, something that's not true, and he's sent to jail. And you think of this as like, man, this is like rock bottom. It can't get much worse than this. I mean, you're already a slave and then you slowly gain position in Potiphar's house where he trusts you, even trusts you to be alone with his wife. But then ultimately that even backfires and blows up in your face. And now you're sent to prison. So you don't even have the privilege of like being 
a slave and having at least the freedoms that you kind of expanded in that role, now you're trapped in prison. And ultimately, we pick up the story there with Joseph trapped in prison. We're in Genesis 40. And and today, uh, if you thought Joseph was in rock bottom in prison, this is kind of uh, maybe the way of saying it is a new rock bottom. And you're like, oh, Joseph, how, how are you going with all this bad stuff happening? And that's why I wanted to do the recap because it's like Joseph hits like wall after wall of what you would consider rock bottom, what you would consider difficulty. No one, no one would blame Joseph for giving up after his brothers uh, sell him into slavery. Like, that's a pretty bad thing. Uh, no one would blame him for giving up after uh, he's falsely accused and thrown in prison. Uh, there's multiple places where like Joseph has every reason to just throw his hands in the air and be like, God clearly is not for me. Yet he remains faithful And I think God remains faithful to him. And we're going to see that in the coming weeks. But today we get to see how God is active in his story, but still things are not going Joseph's way. So my friend Tom Longenecker is going to read uh, Genesis 40 for us. So take it away, Tom. The story of Joseph from the 40th chapter of Genesis. Sometime later, Pharaoh's chief cupbearer and chief baker offended the royal master. Pharaoh became angry with these two officials, and he put them in the prison where Joseph was, in the palace of the captain of the guard. And they remained in prison for quite some time, and the captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, who looked after them. While they were in prison, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they were both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today? he asked them. And they replied, We both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is God's business, Joseph replied. So go ahead, tell me your dreams. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream first. In my dream, he said, I saw a grapevine in front of me. The vine had three branches that began to bud and to blossom, and soon it produced clusters of ripe grapes. I was holding Pharaoh's wine cup in my hand, so I took a cluster of grapes and squeezed the juice into the cup. And then I placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. This is what the dream means, Joseph said. The three branches represent three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift you up and restore you to your position as his chief cupbearer. And please remember me and do me a favor when things go well for you. Mention me to Pharaoh so he might let me out of this place. I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews, and now I'm in here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. When the chief baker saw that Joseph had given the first dream such a positive interpretation, he said to Joseph, I had a dream too. In my dream, there were three baskets of white pastries stacked on my head. The top basket contained all kinds of pastries for Pharaoh, but the birds came and ate them from the basket on my head. This is what the dream means, Joseph said. The three baskets also represent three days. Three days from now, Pharaoh will lift you up and impale your body on a pole. Then birds will come and peck away at your flesh. Pharaoh's birthday came three days later, and he prepared a banquet for all his officials and staff. And he summoned his chief cupbearer and chief baker to join the other officials. He then restored the chief cupbearer to his former position so he would again hand Pharaoh his cup. But Pharaoh impaled the chief baker, just as Joseph had predicted when he interpreted his dream. Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. May God add a blessing to this reading of the word. So this is a wild story here in Genesis 40. Just a quick recap. What ends up happening is these two very important officials get uh, thrown into prison. Uh, these are trusted officials and they're supposed to be people that are looking out in fa- for Pharaoh's best interest. For example, the cupbearer would drink anything first before Pharaoh would drink it um, because 
if it was poisoned, he would die uh, to protect Pharaoh. So uh, this person's putting his life on the line for Pharaoh pretty regularly, and that's kind of his role. And uh, and ultimately, Pharaoh, for some reason, decides like he does not trust them anymore. They've offended him in some way, and, and ultimately, they're put in this position of being in prison. And Joseph, it's so weird. No matter what position he's in. Uh, whether he was in uh, a slave or now he's in prison, he seems to rise in the ranks of like his privilege, his his opportunity. God is actively blessing him even in these terrible circumstances. And I think sometimes it's really important for us to pause and say, how might God be blessing me even when I'm in a difficult circumstance? Because sometimes we don't see that. But ultimately, he's given the opportunity and influence to be the caretaker for these two very important people. Uh, These are two really important officials, and a slave should never have the opportunity to be kind of the the, the caretaker, the, the provider, the person who's kind of walking them through what it's like to be in prison. But ultimately, Joseph is given that particular role. And that's really amazing to see God providing and opening doors in that way because uh, this becomes useful later as these two individuals begin to have dreams. And then Joseph is like, hey, it's God's work. Interpreting dreams is God's work. Uh, I'm connected to God. And so Joseph uses his gifts even in the midst of his trial. I really think this is important. It can become so easy for us to become bitter as we go through difficulty, as we go through pain, as we go through trials. But we don't really get a glimpse of Joseph doing that. Joseph instead takes this opportunity to remain connected to God, the one who gives him the power to interpret these dreams, and ultimately to exercise this gift that God has given him. And so what gifts do you have and how are you using them in the midst of trial, in the midst of pain? Because it seems as if Joseph is like, the trial is not an excuse to stop using my gifts. And I know for some of us, we go through very difficult times. Like it gets really, really, really hard and really, really painful. And it can convince us that like, I don't want to use my gifts. I don't, I don't feel like right now is the time. I don't, I don't have the energy maybe. Um, But God has given you a gift, multiple gifts. And and maybe the, the, the reality of using those gifts might be the very thing that gives you hope in the midst of the trial. And so Joseph decides to exercise the gifts that God has given him. And he helps this cupbearer and baker determine like what their dreams mean. And as he does that, he's gaining influence. Like it's shocking. Like he's, he's interpreting the dream and then the dream comes true. And he's like, okay, so we're friends now, Mr. Cupbearer. Uh, once you get out, like once you're on the other side of this, because this is going to be a trial you're going through. I understand that, you know, prison is awful. It stinks. I've been here. Like, but you're going to get out before me based on my interpretation of the dream. You're going to get out before me. When you get out, when everything I say comes true for you and the baker, here's the deal. Don't forget me. Like share about me to Pharaoh so that, so that maybe I might have an opportunity to, 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 to be free. And so, so he does that because he has this influence. And then what happens is he is forgotten. Even though he's growing in influence, even though God's looking out for him, he's still forgotten. And I think of that feeling that Joseph must have felt in that moment because the influence he had with the cupbearer the time like he had to be face to face with this very, very, very influential individual must have given him so much hope that things were going to change, that his circumstance was going to be completely turned around 180 because of his relationship with the cupbearer and that it was going to happen immediately because as soon as all this happened, he was going to ultimately say, Joseph is the one who predicted all of this, but that doesn't happen. And that must have been heartbreaking for Joseph. And when I say it doesn't happen, it's actually that it didn't happen right away. We'll talk about that next week. But what do we do when we feel like we're already at rock bottom, we get a glimmer of hope, and then that fades away really fast, and we feel like we've been forgotten? Here's the deal. God will meet us in our pain. We've been saying this through the entire 
series, but now I want to say something else. God will meet us and be with us in the pain, but God will actually use our pain. It's not that God's causing us pain. Uh, That's not God's character to bring pain into your life. But ultimately, as the world, the universe, uh, the evil one brings pain our direction, when we feel that pain, when we when we absorb that pain, when we when we sit in that reality, maybe it feels like a jail cell. Maybe maybe it feels like like we're enslaved to something. When we feel that evil, that kind of brokenness in our story, we're not journeying through that alone. God is with us. But even more. What we experience and feel in those times has the ability to shape us for for something in the next chapter. And certainly all of us want that next chapter to be here now. (laughs) Like I know Joseph must have been like, next chapter, it's time to open now. Cupbearer, please go share with Pharaoh so we can get this next chapter open because I am done with this chapter. But ultimately, Joseph has to stay in that chapter for quite some time. He stays in jail, in prison, for quite some time. And it's very painful. It's very difficult. How do we maintain hope when we hit that real rock bottom? Because there's been so many rock bottom moments in Joseph's story. I want to encourage you to consider how Joseph's story might even have some ways of like connecting to your story. Like any pain you're going through, any trial you're going through, might it be that you are just coming up close to to the horizon, that you have to hold on to hope? What's so amazing is like Joseph, again, he's been given every reason to give up. But ultimately, this time of pain is giving him an opportunity to grow. There's this great song by Imagine Dragons, uh, and, uh, and it talks about pain, you make me a believer. You make me a believer. Like, and this, this idea that like sometimes going through the painful stuff actually grows our faith, actually grows our belief. Because in that space, in that space of trial, in that space of struggle, we learn something about ourself and we learn something about God. And so I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to listen to Ryan cover that song. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you that you meet us in our pain and our struggle and our trial, that we are not journeying through that alone. Ultimately, we have you to rely on even as we feel that pain. And God, we thank you that you can repurpose any pain we experience, any trial. Even as we've seen Joseph go from rock bottom moment to rock bottom moment to rock bottom moment, we still see him being faithful to use his gifts. God, may we remain faithful. May may we have the hope to be able to continue to use our gifts, even when we're feeling the pain of the trial that we're experiencing, God. God, we pray that your joy, your presence, your comfort, your peace would come to us as we feel the trials of life, especially right now, as we as a culture are feeling this collective trial of this disease, God. And for many of us, it means we're at home, we're quarantined, we're maybe feeling the stress and anxiety between finances and also between uh, the concern that we might get the disease ourselves, God. I, I just pray that you would meet us in that space, in that trial, God. God, be with all of those who are, who are sick. God, I pray that you would heal them. Pray that you would comfort them in that space. God, be with all of those who are essential workers who are having to go out every day and care for others. God, please be with them. Give them encouragement. Give them hope. Give them your comfort. Give them your energy, God. Ultimately, God, we pray that as we continue to go through this trial and others in our life, that we would maintain a perspective of hope, that ultimately our pain can be repurposed for good. And we're going to see that soon in the story of Joseph. Even though it's been weeks that we've had to endure seeing him go from rock bottom moment to rock bottom moment to rock bottom moment. God, a time is coming where you are going to show him a mountaintop and it's going to be quite beautiful in contrast to all the valleys he's had to journey. But God, may you remind us that that even in those painful moments, God, you can grow our faith. You can grow us into the believers we desire to be. In the name of Jesus, amen.
First things first, I'ma say all the words inside my head I'm fired up and tired of the way that things have been, no Ooh, the way that things have been, no Ooh, well second thing, second Don't you tell me what you think that I can be I'm the one that the sail, I'm the master of my sea, oh Ooh, the master of my sea, oh I was broken from a young age, taking my soaking to the masses, writing my poems. For the you, they look at me, took at me, shook at me, feeling me, singing from heartache, from the pain, taking my message, from the veins, speaking the lesson, from the rain, seeing the beauty. You've heard us turn your spirit to a dove, oh, ooh, your spirit up above, oh, ooh. I was joking in the crowd, living my brain up in the cloud, falling like ashes to the ground, open my feelings, they were drowned, but they never did, ever did, ever did, flow and inhibited, limited, so you broke up and you rained down, you rained down. Of the fire and the flames, you're the face of the future, the blood in my veins, oh, ooh, the blood in my veins, oh, ooh. But they never did, ever did, never did, flowing, inhibited, living it, so you broke up and you rain down. Thank you for being with us today at the Belong Collective. So glad you could join us. A couple really quick things. If you did the hedgehog drawing, uh, what we would like you to do is take a picture of it and tag us on social media. Um, and if you do, uh, you'll we'll randomly pick someone to win the Our Friend Hedgehog Story of Us book. And they'll also get a cool uh, Belong Collective t-shirt. So uh, love belongs to everyone uh, we'll get you those we'll mail them to you and uh, you just all you need to do is either on Instagram or Facebook take a picture of your drawing and uh, tag us in it so tag either the belong collective on Facebook or tag the belong gram on Instagram and when you do that you'll be entered and we'll probably draw uh, on Friday we'll say Friday right okay so you've got a week to
to uh, either go back and watch and be like, okay, I need to refine my hedgehog if I'm gonna share this with others. That's fine, uh, whatever you wanna do. But ultimately, we wanna see your hedgehog drawings. We wanna, we wanna uh, just join in that together to just see what everybody did this morning during that time. And, uh, and this little giveaway will be a fun time. So thank you for being with us today. We hope you have a blessed week. Uh, may God be with you. May God bless you this week and have an amazing week. Thanks for joining us. Stay classy, Belong Collective.